Hey guys, so I am about to leave for an unexpected surgery. I just found out that I had to have it yesterday. It's been a whirlwind. I feel like I haven't even had enough time to like process this. I am going in for a DNC. They will put me under anesthesia, remove any retained tissue that could potentially be cancerous and send it to pathology. I will explain that all in the sit down video. If you haven't seen that one, it will go up before this one. I recommend watching that one first because it's gonna tell you all the things. My mom is actually coming. She's on her way right now. This wasn't planned. It just got scheduled yesterday evening. And so she didn't even know she would have come up yesterday if she had known. My dad wanted to come too, but he's gonna stay with all the pets, all the dogs. I'll try to get some clips like while I'm there. I don't know exactly what the process looks like. I don't know how fast it is or if I'm gonna be like waiting in a room because they want me there two hours early. So I feel like there's gonna be a lot of like wait time. So I might update you guys like before the surgery, but if not, I will see you guys after and hopefully everything will be okay. about food and James, mostly James, and I'm awake. I went to sleep and now it's done. And I don't even remember it because I was asleep. I don't even remember them putting me to sleep. I was like, fine, I was awake. And now I'm here and I'm done. And I'm waiting for Alex. They let me eat some crackers. I was really hungry. And now I'm waiting for Alex. Well, I think I have to wait here a few minutes first. They have a heater on me because I was shivering. Which is weird because I'm never cold. But I'm shivering now. And I'm done. I get to go home. I get to snuggle my baby. I get to sleep. And I get to eat. And I get to watch Bridgerton. My mama will be there. My mama will be there. And I can snuggle my baby. And I'm awake and I don't remember being asleep. Or being put to sleep. I'm not in any pain. They asked me. I don't think they really did anything to be honest. Because... I feel normal. I feel completely normal. I feel like I could just do a whole video right now. I am doing a video, I feel normal. Okay, so I just filmed part three of my miscarriage story. I'm sitting, like I haven't even stood up since then. I am going to now do my DNC story. I really wanna go through every detail from when I walked in the door until when I left because I was so scared going into this and I think it was more the unknown than anything else and when given the choice at the beginning of my miscarriage to choose between side attacks or the DNC, I chose the pill and chose to be in excruciating pain for a week in order to avoid this surgery. If you wanna see why I had to do both, you can watch my whole story. I think that Knowing exactly what's going to happen can ease your fears so much. Before my C-section with my son, I watched so many C-section videos where they would walk through every single thing that happened and it made me feel so much more comfortable going into that day. I was a lot less scared. So I thought that I would just tell you guys everything. Before I get into all of the details of the surgery, I do want to thank the sponsor of today's video, which is HelloFresh. HelloFresh was there for me during this surgery, let me tell you. 
I came home the day of my surgery, there was a box waiting and don't even think I cooked that night because I didn't, but Alex did and it was delicious. And then as I was starting to feel better in the days after my surgery, I was able to make one of the meals and it was so good. I can pretty much only cook when I'm cooking through HelloFresh because I'm not a good cook. I'm trying, I'm learning. I was able to put together a delicious meal that Alex says is the best one he's ever had from HelloFresh. So that definitely made me feel good too. HelloFresh's pre-portioned ingredients means less prep work for you, which is super important to me, less wasted food. And because the produce isn't going through the grocery store, it's coming directly to you. It's going to arrive quicker and at its peak freshness. HelloFresh donated over 4 million meals to charity in 2020 alone, and they're stepping up their food donations even more amid the coronavirus crisis. The meal that I most recently cooked was called Chicken Over Garlic Parmesan Spaghetti, and it was as delicious as it sounds. It was so good that Alex ate all of his and started picking off of James's plate, and James did not have very much to begin with because he's two. And I was like, you cannot eat all your son's food. He'll go hungry. Um, obviously, we're not gonna let him go hungry. I'm hoping that that one comes in another box soon because it was delicious. We are such like chicken cheese pasta people. If you guys wanna try HelloFresh for yourself, they gave me a code that I'm pretty sure is the best code I've ever seen. It's definitely the best one I've ever been able to offer you guys. And it is if you go to HelloFresh.com and you use the code LFowler10, you can get 10 free meals, including free shipping. There's literally no reason to not try it. The meals are delicious. You're probably going to get hooked because it's easy. I will have the link and the code below if you wanna check it out. I highly recommend it. They are delicious and they have been so sweet to me through this entire process of what's been happening in my personal life and I just really really appreciate it. So thank you so much HelloFresh for sponsoring another video. We love you here on this channel and you guys LFowler10 10, 10 free meals HelloFresh.com you know you want to try it. So now we are going to get into the actual details of the surgery. Okay, so if you haven't seen my part three of my miscarriage story, it was the last video that I posted. And in that video, it explains exactly what happened leading up to why I had to have this surgery because I actually decided to take Cytotex, which is the pill, instead of doing the surgery. And I wasn't supposed to have to do both, but I do explain in that video what ended up happening. I was incredibly afraid of the surgery and I just really didn't wanna do it. I'm sure most people who have to have it don't wanna do it. So hopefully this video will make you feel a little bit better because it, honest to goodness, was not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. And hopefully this video will help quell your fears a little bit. My surgery was scheduled at 2 p.m. and I was told that I had to get to the surgery center two hours before, so at noon. I was called the night before with kind of like my pre-op instructions. It was scheduled very last minute, so they didn't have a lot of time to like fully have me do all the things, but they basically said don't have any food after midnight the night before, and then you can have clear liquids up until four hours before your surgery. Clear liquids would be water, Sprite, or they said black coffee. I could have one as long as I didn't put any milk or creamer in it, and I had it black, which is so funny because I don't feel like black coffee is a clear liquid, but as long as it didn't cloud up with the milk, she said. So I did have one black coffee the morning of my surgery, didn't have any food obviously past like 11 o'clock the night before because I went to sleep and I was pretty hungry going into the surgery because I hadn't had anything to eat all day and it wasn't a super early surgery, it was 2 p.m. So I was pretty hungry by the time I went in, but I was also like just so nervous. And I made sure to drink lots and lots of water the night before because you do want your body to be hydrated. And Alex took me, it was up in Nashville at one of the surgery centers and we had to get there at 12. He went in with me and we sat in the waiting room for an entire hour. In that time, I did have a little bit of paperwork, but I mostly just played games on my phone and like read on my phone and Alex was listening to something with his headphones in on his phone and we just waited. I knew we would have to wait a long time because I knew that my surgery wasn't until two. So I kind of went in knowing like there's probably gonna be a lot of sitting around, 
but I think in order to keep the schedule going at the surgery center, like they have to make sure everyone's there and all their paperwork has time to be done and all of that. So even though I had done the bulk of my paperwork the night before online, I still had to sign a few things, pay for the surgery, do all of that stuff. So the surgery ended up costing about $1,400 after my insurance covered a lot of it. Obviously not an expense that we were planning for or wanting to have, but there was nothing that we could do. So we sat there for an hour and then right at 1 p.m. they called me back and I said bye to Alex. I hugged him and he was gonna wait in his car because um, they did say that he couldn't leave the parking lot because he needed to be there when they call the surgery once you get going is a pretty fast one so um he you know took some snacks and he had a pillow and he was just gonna like hang out in his car and chill and maybe take a nap so i got taken back they put a wristband on me they weighed me they did my heart rate and my blood pressure and then they took me to my little room. And I say room in quotes because it was a mix between a room and what you would see in like an ER. It had three solid walls and then the front wall was a curtain, but my curtain didn't go all the way across. In fact, it had a pretty large gap of like a foot um, on one side and it was very crowded in there. There were a lot of people in these little makeshift room like three walled rooms and um, a lot of nurses walking around and so my nurse took me back there and she showed me what to get dressed into she said you know take off all of your clothes and you're going to put on this um, hospital gown that's closed in the front and open on the back side and these special socks that were yellow and they had grips on the top and the bottom so you could not put them on incorrectly and they did require you to wear those socks because it was a fall risk like it protected you against falls and protect the surgery center because obviously they don't want you to fall either so she left she shut the curtain but like i said there was a huge gap i actually filmed it because i was like what is going on um, I tried to like close it and it just was not long enough. So I don't know. It's fine. I kind of got dressed in a way where like even if someone walks by, they wouldn't really be able to see. It was a little bit awkward because you do have to get completely naked. Um, but I mean, I just made it work and put my robe on. Honestly, I was so nervous about the actual procedure that I cared less about like if some random person walked by. But um yeah, that was just me personally. I don't know. That maybe would have bothered some people more, but I just kind of was just like, I'm just gonna put this robe on. Okay, bye. After I got dressed, I kind of like peeked out of the curtain and um, I was just kind of holding the gown to me because it didn't have closures in the back. It was like just open in the back and I was completely naked under. But um, I told the nurse that I was dressed and she said, okay, go ahead and get into the bed. So there was a bed there and it was just like you know a regular hospital bed and it had a blanket on top so i got in underneath the blanket and once i was in the bed i stayed in the bed until i was done and ready to um, get dressed at the end of the surgery so i never felt like exposed other than the fact that my curtain didn't close but that aside like you put the robe on it covers your entire front and then you're laying in a bed so your back is like also covered and then you have a blanket on top of you too. So I felt actually really cozy and snuggly. It actually made me feel better because I, I just felt safe in my little bed. And the nurse came in and she asked me if I wanted a heater turned on in my bed, but I told her that I run really hot, that I would die if she put a heater on. And she said that they actually had an air conditioner, like a cooler that they could put on too, but I didn't need that either. I actually felt perfect with just like my little blanket. I was actually like, pretty happy to just be chilling in the bed at this point. And then she asked me if I wanted mesh panties and the way she asked me, it almost seemed like there was another option. Like she kind of asked with like a question mark. And so I was like, as opposed to what? And she was like, as opposed to no panties. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> you would think that would have just been given to me with my robe, but it wasn't. So she went and got a pair and she brought it to me. I mean, I think it's a little bit different when you're in there for a DNC because you're in the middle of an active miscarriage and so you're bleeding. So it's like a little bit less pleasant to just be 
free down there, you know? Um, and I, I don't know if maybe she just forgot until after I was already dressed and then she was like, oh, she, that might make her more comfortable to have that. So she did give me those. I did laugh about that. And then she put all of my belongings, my purse and all of my clothes into this clear bag. And it was just right on the chair next to my bed. And she let me have my phone cause she knew I was still going to be kind of like laying there for an hour. So she did allow me to play games on my phone and read on my phone. And I was like texting Alex and stuff and sending little videos of my feet to my family <laughs> and the gap in the curtain. She went ahead and started my IV at this point because I did have to have 30 minutes of a hydration drip or something like a bag of fluids to help with the surgery. So she started my IV. She asked me if I wanted it in my arm or my hand. And I learned from my C-section that hand IVs are awful. I think all IVs are awful, but if I had to choose, I would always pick my arm. So I picked my arm and she started the IV and then she got me like a pillow to prop my arm up so that it could stay straight because um, if you bend it too much, the like fluid will stop going in. And so she got me like really comfortable. She was so nice and she was just like, okay, you're just gonna probably sit here for about 30 minutes. And you know, I was just like reading on my phone and texting my family. I was feeling pretty snuggly and comfortable in my bed. I was obviously really nervous, but I also just felt like I was ready to just get it over with at that point. And so for about 30 minutes, I laid there. And then in the last 30 minutes before my surgery, so starting around 1.30, that's when all the people started coming in. So every single nurse who was gonna be there, my doctor, my anesthesiologist, like everyone came in individually, introduced themselves, asked if I had questions, told me exactly what their role was and what was gonna happen. Every single one double checked my name, what surgery I was in for and my birthday and they double checked on my paperwork and on my wristbands. It was almost comical how careful everyone was being, but also it made me feel a lot safer. You know, there's all sorts of surgeries happening in the same center and you don't wanna accidentally be sent in and get a hysterectomy or something, you know? Like, I'm glad that they're really careful. Right before it was time to go, the, the main nurse came back in and she had me sign a couple of last minute documents that I had like met with everyone, that everything had been explained to me properly, that I didn't have any questions going into the surgery. And then when I was done signing the last sheet, she was like, okay, now you get the good stuff. And I was like, what's the good stuff? And she was like, we're gonna give you something for anxiety in your IV and we're gonna take you right in. And so as she was saying that, she was putting something in my IV and you guys, it took not even three seconds for the edges of the world to start blurring. It was instant relaxation. And honestly, I feel like they should give that to you sooner just because people are so nervous going into surgery. But I think they needed you to be like fully aware when you were like asking questions and being, you know, told all of your things and like giving consent for things. So as soon as all of that was done, she was like, okay, now you can have your like thing to make you feel more relaxed. And the second she gave it to me, I started feeling it. They started wheeling my bed out and they, it was so funny. They like took me out of my room. We turned down the hallway and the, the surgery room was like right there. Like we literally went next door. <laughs> it was like one second and they pushed me into the OR and like all the people who had introduced themselves were standing there. And this all happened like from the moment she put the anxiety stuff in my IV into the moment I'm remembering could not have been more than five steps slash seconds and I was out. I don't remember them putting like a mask down on my face. I didn't count down like they do in movies. I don't know how they put me out, but in what felt like one second later, I was waking up back in that same room with the same nurse sitting right by my bed in a, in a chair and it was done. I mean, obviously like all surgeries, when you get put under, you wake up and it's done. I mean, that's how it works. But there was no pain involved. With a lot of surgeries, I'm sure when you wake up from anesthesia, you are in a lot of pain, even with my C-section when like after they actually took James out, after it had been, you know, 30 minutes after, I was feeling really sick. My teeth were, were chattering. Like I was having a lot of side effects from it, but it honestly felt like no time had gone by. I didn't feel like I had been in a surgery. I felt honestly like they hadn't done anything at all. Like they had like, I had closed my eyes and they had snuck me back to my room. So. I was actually really pleasantly surprised when I woke up and had no pain. 
um, and just felt really normal. Like I didn't feel like people had been all up literally inside me, which is they had been, you know? Um, but the nurse was sitting in the chair right there when I came to, and she asked me if I wanted a snack. And I said, yes, please. Cause you're very hungry. Cause you haven't eaten anything since the night before she brought me peanut butter crackers and a Sprite and let me have about 20 minutes to just kind of wake up. When you're waking up from anesthesia, you're kind of like in and out a little bit at the beginning. She wanted me to finish my snack. And then once it was finished, she wheeled my bed right across the hall into the room right there. And it was like another recovery room, but this one had like a really big like armchair kind of thing in it. And she helped me get out of bed and into the chair. And then she gave me my clothes and she asked me if I needed help getting dressed. And I said, no. And uh, my IV was out and everything by this point. And I got dressed on my own. I mean, I was kind of sitting in the chair. I think they put you in that room for getting dressed because it's like you're supported in a chair. I don't know. I don't know, it was very, they were very like careful, um, but I felt fine. As I was getting dressed, she told me she was gonna call Alex to have him come meet us at the front of the building and pick me up. And so I got dressed, we waited for him to call back saying that he was at the front and then they put me in a wheelchair and they wheeled me down to Alex and they put me in the car with him and he signed some paperwork, like, I guess like checking me out or something, I don't know. And then we drove home. And when we got home, my mom had come into town. Um, this all happened so last minute, she wasn't able to come in time to be there before I left, but she was there when I got home. And we curled up in my bed and we binged 90 Day Fiance for two days straight. And it was literally the best recovery I could have asked for in terms of like the emotional support. I just i was so happy that she was able to come down and that she was there because i feel like when you have surgery you just need your mama the recovery was incredibly easy i did have a little bit of bleeding that night and a little bit the next day and then that stopped and also whenever i would pee it would burn like almost like a uti um it definitely when i was peeing that's when i was like okay they definitely they were like down here you know it felt weird but other than that, when I wasn't like actively peeing, I didn't have any pain at all. There was no cramping. There was literally no discomfort. Um, I think if anything, I was just kind of woozy that first day from the anesthesia. I slept a lot and that was it. I mean, it was really easy as far as surgeries go. And compared to my experience with the Cytotex, it was like night and day, the experience between the two. If I ever have another loss, like, please don't. But if I ever do, I will pick the surgery from the beginning. Oh, I almost forgot. I did have one bad thing that came out of it. And that was that because they put you down like fully under anesthesia, like I had a tube down my throat and everything, my throat hurt so badly for about three days. In fact, I almost lost my voice at one point. Um, the first night my throat was in a lot of pain. It was similar to like how you feel when you have strep. It was just in so much pain. Like it felt completely bruised and battered and ripped up in there. And then by the next day it was more manageable, but still uncomfortable. And then by the third day that was like almost gone. And then now it's completely gone. But I would say out of everything, that was the worst part. And that isn't even directly related to the type of surgery I had. That was just a side effect of like any type of surgery where you're put under with a tube down your throat. That was pretty uncomfortable. But as far as like the actual things specific to a DNC, I didn't feel like the recovery was bad at all. My doctor called me the next day and I told her I felt great and didn't have any questions. The only thing that kind of stinks is I can't take a bath for two weeks. Like I can take showers obviously, but I'm a huge bath person. I take them like every single day. So that's been killing me a little bit. I like miss them so much. I can't even describe to you how much I miss baths, but um, I mean, that's a small thing, all things considered. So uh, we did have the tissue that they removed sent to pathology because there's a risk of a partial molar pregnancy, which is a cancer thing. But I talked about all of that in my last video in part three. So you can check that out if you want more info and scoop on that. But I am still waiting to hear back from pathology. And it's been exactly one week since my surgery. I feel great. My bleeding has completely stopped. My beta HCG numbers have finally plummeted. They had plateaued, which is the whole thing with the 
molar pregnancy cancer thing, but um, it's gone down to a 10 in one week and I'm so happy. I'm so thrilled about it. So yeah, I wouldn't be scared if you have to do a DNC. I know some people have different experiences. I know some people do have pain afterwards, cramping afterwards. There's a chance of scar tissue which can affect your fertility moving forward. So you do, there are risks. I mean, you don't wanna just pick the surgery just because it's easier than the Cytotex. There were definitely pros and cons to both, but having experienced both, I have been very detailed with both. You can watch part two of my miscarriage story that will explain everything that happened with the side attacks. And then this one for the DNC, you can kind of choose, you know, if you have to make this decision, which I hope that you never do, but if you do, you can watch my experiences. Everyone's gonna be a little bit different, but the DNC was a lot easier. Oh my gosh, so much easier. And knowing what I know now, I will choose that going forward. But like I said, there are pros and cons to both. So also like, I think it's important to see what your doctor recommends. Mine didn't really have a preference. He didn't push either way. But if your doctor does have a strong preference, you know, sometimes I feel like with those kinds of things, you should just like listen to your doctor if you trust them. So that is it. I think that I am going to do one more video to kind of wrap up everything that's happened. This has been a huge thing in my life and it's gonna be a Q&A because I know that I've gotten a lot of really specific questions on my previous videos and I think it would be good to just address a lot of these questions in one video. Um, so I'll probably ask for questions on Instagram sometime soon, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that none of you guys will have to make the decision to choose or will never have to have to have a DNC the way I did. But if you did, I hope this video makes you feel better because it really truly was not as bad as I thought it was going to be. And I think the unknown was the worst part. And I hope that this video makes you feel like you don't have to go into it not knowing anything. So anyway, that's gonna be it for this video. Thank you so much HelloFresh for sponsoring another video. You guys have been the best through all of this. I appreciate it so much. And thank you guys for watching this video and all of my other videos. It has been a rough time for me, but I am getting through it and I am distracting myself with furniture buying and there's a lot of home videos coming up. So yeah, I hope you guys are doing well and I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.